everyone, I'm back. I uh, I thought I'd do a quick video, you know, just to make sure that no one uh, calls the Dutch police and say says, you know, you gotta go check out Anne Marie Ritterhoff because she's missing in action and we haven't seen her for quite a long time. So uh, I thought let's do a video. Uh, first off, I would like to thank everyone that has sponsored me in January 2018. This is the updated list. And if you have sponsored me and you're not on here, you don't see your name, then please just slip me an email. The email is under the video, you know, with the information stuff. And um, because I only have one PayPal account and everything goes in and out of there, stuff that I buy from eBay and, and all sorts of stuff. And it just might, you know, sometimes I might, one might slip through. So if you don't see your name, you have uh, sponsored me, just slip me an email. Now, um, I got, today I got all my uh, uh, ordered stuff. And I wanted to show you a couple of things. This is um, from the same um, marble paper. And as you can see, this one, it's a black frame and this is a black mat. We call it a passepartout. I don't know how you call it. When it's cut like this, they cut it in a angle of 45 degrees. So you see the inside of the paper is white. And then you have um, the outside. Uh, this thing we call a passepartout. And I think it's French. And I think in English they call it a mat. So I'm, I'm not totally sure, but this is, um, that's how we call it. Now, as you can see, this is totally black. And I find this the most appealing because it's a black mat. It's a black frame and there's a lot of black in the, uh, in the image. So it sort of makes it pop out. Now here I chose a, um, anthracite, very dark gray frame because it's here in the painting too. So this is something that when you're going to frame your uh, paintings, and it doesn't matter what it is, it can be a drawing, it can be a pencil drawing, a colored pencil drawing, um, a watercolor, whatever. What you can do is you look at your, if I were to put a blue frame around here, this would pop also because, you know, just taking a color out of your painting and matching the frame it's that's the that's the way to go so as you can see two um two different uh frames and if you look this one really pops because it's all black and there's a black in the uh in the image so i think you know just sometimes if you were to take your um the thing you want to frame you take it to the shop and you can hold it up against the frame colors you know, it'll give you some sort of uh, inspiration what to do. So um, I like them. I think they turned out really pretty. And um, I might even uh, sell these on Etsy if people are interested in them. I might put them on Etsy. So just let me know and uh, I'll do that. Now, I am going to um, do some more marbling this weekend. Because this weekend, I promise you, I'll make it all up. We're going to do a marathon weekend. I don't know. I'll do eight videos or something like that. Just as many as I can do. Um, I, I, I bought a couple of uh, brands of uh, Indian ink. Um, no, Chinese ink. Sorry. It is India ink, but it's Chinese. So um, this one, it's not that expensive. And I'm not sure if it, it will do anything, but we'll see. Then I bought some real um, Chinese ink. This is uh, a la pagode. Yes, very interesting. But uh, this uh, should be a very good uh, ink to try. I've had a little one before, but um, I'm, I don't know if you remember, but it all dried up on me. So I'm going to try this one. And then I have a very, very, very special black ink. Now, you use it with something like this. This is um, stone, so you don't... Uh, don't drop it as you can see here there's a dink out of there see that but i'm not someone that you know calls the company and says oh, it came and there was a little bit off so who cares you know i'm going to be putting it on there and off there oh there is a little bit of a 
Well, we'll see how long it takes before it falls apart. But this is stone. Now what you do is you use this stuff. And this is um, some sort of ink, but it's like solid. And what you do is you rub it in here rear, 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 with water, and it's, of course, and you just put a, as much on there as you think is you know, good for what you're doing, and then you can do a lot of stuff with that. And that's, it's really pretty, look at that. Let me get in close. Not close enough. There it is. See that, how pretty that is? Then this side. And the whole thing is ink, so you just keep on rubbing it in this. Uh, let me get you back in focus. It won't happen. Yeah. So then you rub it in here, and it has a little uh, rim so that it stays there in the middle, and that's how you use it. So we're going to be using that this weekend. I'll show you how that works. I've never used it before, so maybe I'll do something stupid. Who knows? Um, then, also this weekend, because I have bought a lot of um, wax, I'm going to do an encaustic, but I'm going to do flowers. And I did want a little bit of gold. This is really gold. I've never tried that before. So that's gold, and this is black. These are two colors of green, a yellow. This is a very dark green. And then the pinks, because I want to do, um, this is also pink, if you really, you know, make it fluid. So I'm going to do a flower with a lot of green, a lot of uh, beautiful leaves on it. I want a hint of gold in it. And then when, when it's totally done, when I'm finished and I'm satisfied with what I've made, I'm going to do a shellac burn over it. And think in the in the way like um, Alicia told me, that's what I'm going to try to do. So because a lot of people are asking me, you know, how does she do that? And I'll just try and see what I can come up with. I'm not, of course, not going to, you know, totally copy what she does, but I am going to give it my own spin, and we'll see what happens when I'm uh, when I'm done. Now that's what I'm going to do this weekend. Another thing I'm going to do, and that's what I'm going to do when I stop this video, is I'm going to try for the first time, I'm going to try on some really special acrylic paper. <coughs> and this is the paper. Now I'm going to zoom you in. There you are, see that? Uh, it's almost like linen. Well, it is. It has a, a pattern. Um, it looks like linen. But I want to see how uh, flat this is going to stay because, um, as you know, I'm going to Frankfurt in Germany uh, the end of next week, and I'm going to do some demos for uh, Vallejo. But it's a business-to-business, -business, a um, yeah, business-to-business -business trade fair, and. You know, if I pour on canvases over there, you know, it's going to cost a lot of money. I don't want to have Vallejo, you know, pay for that much of those, um, those canvases. And the second thing is you'll have to throw them away because you can't, you know, stay there until they're dry because that, that's not going to happen. So um, I thought, what a waste for all those canvases. What I can do is try out some paper, and I'll show you what I bought because this is only the one one sort, but this was the most beautiful with that linen structure on it. So this is the linen structure, and this is um, this is a very um, good company that makes all sorts of paper for artists and it's called Hannemüller and I think it's German not not totally sure but I, yeah it is here it says everything with uh, it starts in German Papier mit leicht glanzende Linnenstruktur paper with a linen 
texture and satin finish. So we're going to try this. This is 330 grams. So we're going to try that one. And we're going to try this one. This is 350 grams, also from Hanna Müller. And then we're going to try this one. This is really thick. This is 450 grams, also Hanna Müller. I love the Hanna Müller. And then this one, don't even know whose this is, or Claire Fontaine. I don't know. It's, I think it's. Uh, it might be French. Who knows? Let's see. Oh yeah, it's French. Made in France. And I'm not going to try to read that because my French is like, I could, you know, I could say anything and you, you'd believe me, maybe some people uh, in Canada, they talk French, but I don't talk French. So that's one I'm going to try to also. So that all sort of sums it up and I am going to do some testing. I'm going to do some new pouring on this with uh, Vallejo. I'm going to try you know what I'm going to do? I just thought about that like 10 minutes ago before I started this uh, video. I thought, hey, why do we put Floetrol in there? Why do we put pouring medium in it? Have we ever tried this with Vallejo fluid with just silicone? Have we done that? No, we haven't. I haven't. So I'm going to try that. Just, you know, it just hit me. Why don't we do that? I don't know because it's fluid enough it it will hold the silicone and who knows it might be just you know something awesome who knows i don't know why i haven't tried that before so that's what we're gonna do so i'm gonna put this uh, video up on youtube then i'm gonna oh no i'll just wait i'll just do the video yeah yep i'm gonna do it right now so see you back in a flash I love you all to pieces. Oh, I was going to tell you something else, but that is, nah, maybe not. Maybe not a good idea. It was about royal talents. Eh, yeah, maybe I should. Who cares? I was on YouTube, and I came across a really nice video. Someone was uh, trying to do a pour, and their torch sort of half exploded. And I recognize that because I've had that in, like, way in the beginning. When you overfill the torch, it sort of, you know, is like a flamethrower. <laughs> yeah, really funny. And underneath, she said, I give workshops. I thought, okay, that's cool. Then I thought, let's see what she um, asked for a workshop. So I clicked on the link and I went to her website. And then I saw that she was um, doing it for Royal Talons. And I'm thinking, no. That cannot be because Royal Talons, they told me they didn't want to associate their name on this type of painting. They told me that the laboratory people <coughs> said that it was really dangerous and they didn't want anything to do with it. And they didn't want to put their name on this whole pouring thing. And that's why they called me the day that I was going to go there and they said, you don't have to come because we don't want to talk to you. So, okay. So I clicked on there and lo and behold, what does Royal Talons do? They're giving workshops, acrylic pouring with a torch. Well, you know, I had to sit down because I was, I think, what? That is unbelievable. Then I went to the website, the Royal Talons website, looking for those workshops. And believe it or not, I came on the page where they do the acrylic pouring and whose picture is on there mine and that is like the limit they you know for the, you know, the people that are following me from the beginning and have seen all my videos there are a couple of videos where I explain the whole royal talents debacle that they just you know were so rude and um, first they make an appointment with me, then they, just the day before, they just, you know, flip me off. And then they say they don't want to put their name on this stupid acrylic pouring. Then they say it's dangerous. Then they do the whole backpedaling. And now what are they doing? They're giving the workshops and they're using my picture. And that is, that is the limit. I'm really, I am so done with that company. Can't even tell you. If I... If they came here with a truckload of paint, I'd, I'd, I'd stick an ice pick in their tires. That's what I'd do. Really. 
I am so done with them. And I, I mailed them. That's why I, I, I was going to do a video yesterday about it because I was so upset about it. And I thought, no, I'm going to just mail them and ask them for an explanation, especially because my picture is on their website and they don't even have the decency to answer my email. So I thought, okay, then I'll just talk to all my lovely viewers about it. And especially the people that have been with me from the beginning that know how that all, you know, went about and what took place. So that's Royal Talents. Thank you very much. Now, I love you all to pieces. Liebe euch alle. Hoffe ihr allemaal. And I'll be right back.